All right, welcome everybody to Rise Up and Carve's Spoon Challenge 34 show and tell. This is the Rise Up and Carve a Knife, well, it's really the Anya Sundberg uh, Rise uh, Knife Sheath Challenge. Uh, that we sort of uh, glommed on to. So um, I, uh, I know there's been a lot of really cool posts out there to both the Ruax Spoon Challenge 34 hashtag as well as the Knife Sheath Challenge hashtag. And we're glad to have uh, all you folks with us here today to uh, show us uh, what you've done with your sheaths and see what's going on there. Before we jump into that, um, Anya did a wonderful demo for us uh, talking about not just the, how she, she does these sheaths, but as well as some of her painting uh, tips and tricks. So uh, Anya, we want to extend again a thank you uh, to you for, for doing that. It's, that is available. It's up on YouTube uh, on our Rise Up and Carve channel. Um, Anya, do you want to say just a quick few words again about what inspired you to do this knife sheath challenge that you started? Uh, what inspired me? Uh, what inspired me? Oops, was uh, this <laughs> the petroleum-based knife sheath that comes with your standard Mora 120 or 106? <laughs> yeah, and uh, the the Mora falls out of it. <laughs> so that's it. Indeed, that's a good reason for it. How did you come about doing the type of sh wood sheath that you do? What what gave you that kind of impetus uh, to go that direction? I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to make a sheath, but the leather I have uh, is uh, soft. Because you need this rawhide that's, that's hard and gets soft by, by soaking in water. And I didn't have that at home. So I figured, ah, oh, wood, <laughs> I have wood. There you go. All right. Hooray for the new wood culture. Yeah. <laughs> this is just a revival, of course, of the old wood culture. <laughs> All right. I like leather. I like leather too, but uh, I yeah. don't have any good. I love leather stuff, but I've not. That's that's one of those other crafting rabbit holes that I have not yet dived down into, and I'm kind of afraid to. <laughs> so, uh, oh, it's fun. <laughs> the, more from the perspective of when I get into something, I tend to then start, I, I start researching it and, okay, I got to get this tool. I want to get that tool and I want this. And it's, it's so easy. I'm a, such a typical American. I can just buy my way into the craft. I don't have to learn anything. I don't have to have skills. I just need a better tool. <laughs> is that just me? Am I, am I, is that bad of me to mock other Americans? I feel like it's a very American sort of thing, but maybe that's wrong. Maybe it's just a me thing. <laughs> Anyway, all it right. A you're beginner doing, craft thing. Right. You're doing, Chuck. You're doing fine. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Andreas. And there are a lot, and there are a lot of fun tools in leather. So go, go get some tools. Right. I know so many cool tools. All right, yeah. Anya. Do you have a couple of your sheets handy that you can just show us again for? Uh, just examples of, of where you went with this before we start showing everybody else's? Well, the first, okay, I'll see if I can turn my camera around. There you go, yeah. So yeah, this was the first one I did and it was kind of ugly. <laughs> and then I started I started making uh, fancy ones. Ooh, here's the relief like card. A, yeah, they are relief carved. Nice. Has autumn leaves on it, but uh, the knife didn't you know, catch so well. well. It falls out. So then I figured I do like boxes uh, with openings. Let's see. Oops. I, do, I don't. I don't have a an assistant today. Camera person this time. No worries. Yeah. Oh, very cool. <laughs> Not like this. Uh, and then I did oh, the hot dog thing. One of them is a knife, one of them is not. <laughs> That's awesome. There. Oops. And I needed this. It's like the knife is in a knife. 
which is always fun because I've made one of these. Actually, this was the first one I did a long time ago. Just because it scares people because you walk around life like that. But it's uh, nice. Yep. Yeah. So very, very cool. What else? Uh, but the last one, oh, I don't know. Those, oh, those, this is a fish one. Um, these ones have been around for a while, I guess. And then the last ones I tried to make very simple. So I made, this one was the challenge one, so make it simple. And then I, I made some more from that. Oh, you can see it's patterns on. Really nice. I love that blue. That really? patterns as well. Well, it's just yeah. graffiti pattern. And what more? Oh, oh, there is one. There is one too. So you've done it's a few. French, which I don't know. Uh, yeah. Like, wow. But now I think I, oops, I'm to turn it around. I think I have enough sheets now. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, you've done a few of them. <laughs> do you have Do you have that oh, many yeah. knives? I think so. Awesome. All right. Well, with uh, that. The more, the more sorry, a knife factory is closed. Oh, yeah. So you've got plenty of them. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I've got, I've got much more than that. <laughs> I live so, close to the knife factory. Are you uh are you able to get them for like pennies? <laughs> are they are they, are they but uh, I gotta think that they're probably still a lot less expensive for you than they are for us over here or no? Probably a little less expensive, but uh, uh, I used to be able to go there and get like second what do you call them? Second? Yes, yeah, like factory seconds. Yeah, they yes. have little imperfections. Yeah. But uh, they, they kind of don't have that anymore. And one of the factories burned down. So I think there is only one left now. Oh, wow. The Mura knife. Um, All right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for this challenge and for letting us uh, jump onto it. And like I said, thank you again for your demo uh, of how you go about carving these. Uh, with that, I think we're going to go ahead and open up the floor. Let me uh, dive back out to my gallery view. And... Uh, as per usual, uh, wave your hand at your camera if you would like to show your sheath. Um, so who would like to kick us off? Who'd, who'd want to start? Give us, give me a wave. All right, John in Scotland. Let me spotlight you. How are we doing? <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> these are quite good to make. I've been making them for a while, but to start with, they were like hybrids. So it was like a curly little bit with a uh, leather. To actually hold it in yeah so same thing quite a good grip and then I had a recent blade and I needed also another one a 105 and say so it was just with my initials on it nice like a hybrid they went with a carved to suit my hand and then the first one I made was a little Dave Bud knife which is a brand of wood but it's actually uh -huh. held on with rare earth magnets. So it, so it can actually. Oh, wow. But yeah, it's the same as that. And then the first one I made was before I'd watched Anya's demonstration. So it was a branch of wood. And I just split down the middle of it. And then uh, glued it back together. But I hadn't watched how she did it to start with. So it's fine. It fits. And it wouldn't fall out either. Excellent. So that was all just a bit of chip carving, but it's, I wasn't going to touch it because it's got a nice bit of grain, but I've got yeah. to what it is. So, and then after I watched the demonstration, I made another one. Nice. And, just, and that's finished with a gun stock oil, which is a bit like modified linseed oil, but it gives a bit of sheen to it. Yeah. And that's the same. That's, just for another 106, that's the same, but quite, but they make good sheaths and a, uh, yeah, when you've no leather, they're ideal. They don't take that awful long to do. Once you've especially followed Anya's way of doing them, it's a, uh, you probably get quicker and better as you make them. 
But nope. so that's as far as I got so far. I've got another one started, but I'm starting to run out of knives to put them in. So I think we'll start on some of the club knives and we'll get rid of them then. Yeah, so that's as, that was mine. Awesome. Well, well done, you. I love I loved all those. That was absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Excellent. Any uh, comments or questions from uh, anybody for uh, for John? All righty. That was quick and easy. Indeed, that was easy. Um, John, so um, how difficult is it to to um, to carve the sheath and that the blade fix in in the sheath to, that it doesn't fall out? Right, it's what I did with it was make it so before before I glued it together and I just held it in, the knife wouldn't actually fit in at all. It was quite tight, you think you would split it. So you make it slightly undersized, and then when you cut the little grooves in it, it gives you enough flex then without splitting, and that holds it tight. So you basically okay. make it too small to start with, and then cut the grooves in it, and that gives you enough flex for it to hold it to, to just to grip it. Okay. But that was all. Awesome. All right. Who would like to go next? Wave your hand into the camera. Let me know you want to go. All righty, Brad. Okay, Doke. Um, I'm going to go. Hold on a minute. Okay, unmute myself. I'll go next because mine is very similar to John's in design, although I'll talk about it in English. <laughs> <laughs> and sorry, I have a tooth that was taken out yesterday, day before yesterday, so I'm gonna to try to avoid smiling. Anyway, I went for the same simple shape uh, as John did, but I wasn't as uh, gutsy. I didn't do any carving, no coloration, just uh, black walnut, pretty wood. And really same thing, when I made the, the two halves, the knife would lay in there, but when I held them together and clamped them, I couldn't get the knife out and I couldn't put it in until I cut the grooves. And these screwed up, this is a little bit splintery. Um, usually walnut is pretty, pretty well behaved, but I drilled the hole and then I used a little handsaw to cut to it. And, and I went beyond the hole on one side, but, um, uh, but it still works. It still goes click and then stays in there. So, um, and I just, I haven't got a lanyard or a belt loop yet, but um, we'll get there someday. I just wanted to take the easiest path and I oh. wasn't very brave about carving. Very nice. Great job. Although I'm having a bit of a tough time understanding your accent. It's that Vermont <laughs> accent. It's, it's pretty tough to get. Yeah, it's, it's quite a strong accent, yeah, you know. <laughs> All right, well done. Now, I kind of wondered actually about, I, I don't think I ever asked Anya when you were doing your um, demo about if by putting the slits in there, like it, does that increase any risk of the whole thing splitting? <laughs> by any, I, I guess that's why you have maybe the hole drilled. It, it prevents it from continuing on down through it. Yeah, yeah that's what's stopping the crack okay. to continue. Excellent. But <laughs> I, I haven't done more than what I have here on the shelf, so I'm no professional. I, I haven't used them for more than a month, so I don't know if they work or not. You're, you're, you're more of a professional than I am, let's put it that way. <laughs> Excellent. Well, that's how it is in, in wood woodwork. Yep. You get a professional from doing a few. <laughs> that's right, so I do it a lot. Okay. All right, who would like to go next? Don't be shy, folks. Wave a hand. All right, I see Jody and then Jurgen, and then Larry. If I can remember all of that, remind me if I don't. Morning. So um, I worked on two, and I only got one finish for this morning, but this is the one. Oh, the sun is so bright. Hold on a second. Um, this is the one that I finished, and the knife when I first carved it, it fell out. So it wasn't tight enough. And I was very disappointed that I worked on it for so long and then it didn't hold in. 
And um, so my solution was to add this leather strap. Yeah. So that adds some like a loop on it and it also holds the knife in. So now it slides in nice and easy. Grips and um, I really enjoyed doing um, milk paint and try to put it in a better spot. Um, I did milk paint and then chip carved over top of it. That's beautiful. And worked on just getting like lots of layers and details. A really cool design. And then I um, I stitched, this was hard, but I put it in some of my stories. It was hard sewing through the thing. I had a curved needle to use, but um, it was like just a millimeter too big to get all the way out. So I had to do a little bit of, I don't know, tricky sewing inside there. So I didn't get the click on this one, even though it does, it's nice and tight in here. So I started, as soon as I realized that this one didn't click, I started on another one. So this is my second one. Um, let me put a knife in. So I also couldn't get the knife in when it was glued together. And um, I ended up carving the, see now it, slide, it slides right in, but there's no click. So I don't really know what I'm doing wrong. I ended up making the holes, it doesn't fall out, but um, I don't know. I'm disappointed that I didn't get the click on this one. I'm also going, I'm going to, um, paint this one as well. Not as detailed, but I have um, some no paint colors in mind for this. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if the reason I'm wondering if the reason you're running into that is if the wood is changing maybe like was it green wood when you no it's not the wood. Oh, it was poplar and um, it was dry. I actually got it out of the wood pile. It was okay. from um, some of the trees that we cut last spring, but um, so maybe I you're just not leaving it. Maybe you're not leaving it small enough. Yeah. yeah, I think so. And then you know I wanted it to fit in, and I think I, I think the key would be take out a bunch, like take out extra in the middle. Yeah. And less here, so yeah. that it actually you know, besides from this part, it actually fits loosely in here, except for the top, yeah. because gotcha. that's the part that is holding it in that should click when it goes in. But I'm wondering since you've got a since you've got a slit on there, I'm wondering if maybe you could use some twine or leather strapping to tighten that in just a little bit at the top. Maybe. And maybe that would, you know, maybe it would give it a little bit more grip. That's what I was trying to do with this one too, because yeah. at first I thought I'll make four slits. I, I probably could have made them deeper now that I know. Um, and I carved this one pretty thin on the top edge, but yeah. I really tried, I could have done it if I had like some wire or something, but I, I tried to, I can force it closed with my hand Right. But I could not get it to tie. I tried some really strong um, twine. I could not get it to tie tight enough to make any difference. Gotcha. So I just ended up doing the leather and that's what it is. Uh, so, hmm. anyway. Yeah, wire maybe where you can twist it in order to force it to. Yeah, attack. I know. I just don't have that, all the tools for that. I mean, yeah. Go ahead, Anya. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, I noticed that. Well, my first sheets were not clickable. They were just simple sheets. So that's why I put leather in, like you, and they they fit because I seldom put them upside down. They will work anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but then making the clicking ones, I actually use this a lot. So I measure, mm -hmm. I measure my handle very very careful. Yeah. So. It's actually deeper in the middle where the handle is bigger, and then where where the handle sits close, like at the end. I really yeah. measure it so it's exactly as big as, as right. the handle. I guess yeah, it's one of those too. tools. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, so so you can <laughs> so then I measure the handle. Yes, at different positions of the handle, uh, and yeah. then I use this part to measure how deep I yeah. was. I did a lot with yeah. um, the carbon paper and seeing where it was rubbing and very carefully oh, yeah. trying to do that. But but th th this is quite much. Yeah. Or this else is quite it just doesn't work. I, I guess you could do it smaller too and make it flex more, but because mine doesn't flex very much. It yeah uh, true. i don't know but what happened to me is i also i also took wood from the wood pile and now all of them are too small because they shrunk oh from being <laughs> indoors <laughs> so they have a very good fit now <laughs> i i really have to uh, work hard to get them in and out of the sheet mm. yeah so so this is a tip anyway from me <laughs> yep thank you and the leather i have is is just decoration but i guess could help close, but I don't know. It's leather is not like a rubber band or something. It, yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess if you put it really tight, it could help. Yeah. But I think struggle. you're yeah. Uh anyway, I like the design very much with the colors. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Really I'll nice. myself. Awesome. Great job, Jody. Wonderful. Alrighty, I think uh, Jurgen, you're up next, right? Let me uh, spotlight you. There we go. Um, yeah, see if the lighting's good here. So the um, this one. So the knife that I did was, it's the Mara, but it's uh, I had read. I would rehandled it before, and it's got you know the facets and on the on mm -hmm. the handle. So when I made the the uh, the sheath, I kind of had to deal with it a little bit more around those facets, so it would fit in a little. Yeah, so that was a little bit of a uh, pain. I had to on the inside get those to line yeah. up so that it would at least go in. And then I just um, decided I'd do a little bit of chip carving on the on the walnut. Very, very nice. It looks fantastic. Yep. So that's great that. job. So it, um, I, I probably if I did it again, I would have probably just done two slots on it first, and then seen how it how it connects in, then then cutting the four. I cut. Yeah, I should have probably just done two, seen how it yeah uh, went in and then cut but it i get that yeah, right. you get a nice satisfying snap to it so yeah but you know what i don't know if the snap the people's what this snap is you're hearing it's not like the wood from coming up around the the handle it's yeah it's probably snap. the bolster hitting the bottom or something you mean or yeah, yeah. it's it's basically hitting it it's yeah it, it goes and hits this the sh sh this shoulder here yeah the end grain yeah yeah i mean that's where it's coming in but it there's it hits that that spot and there's no wiggle at all so it, it i did make it so that it would expand out and come you know over that yeah. that high point and there's no wiggle at all in in the yeah. uh, in it so so i was happy with how it came out excellent great job all righty let me jump back out real quick. Uh, and then I think we had, it was, was it Larry next? Larry, I think you were next, right? Let me spotlight you real quick. Remember to unmute yourself. All I'm right. Unmuted, I believe. Yep, you're good. <clears throat> I started out with uh, paper design. Very nice. Measurements and, and doing something, doing an idea like this. And I thought, well, I'd use the frogs for uh, my motif. And then I uh, basically just took a piece of black walnut and split it in half and laid my knife down and did the carving out on the inside and glued it back together and things just, I don't have the, I didn't see any of the videos that uh, everybody else has seen. And I don't have any kind of split to hold it it just it just worked out very good 
Oh. Yeah. All right. Anyway. Excellent. I love that frog. frog. Yeah. Great job on the frog. That's fantastic. So let's see. Larry has Thank frogs. You. Oren has snails. Uh, was it Patrice has bats? I love it. Excellent job. All right. Let me uh, jump back out to the gallery. And who would like to go next? All right, Patrice. Let me spotlight you real quick. All right, so here's the bat that uh, checks. That's so here. cool. <laughs> it's so cool. So it looks, I looks like it belongs on Batman's utility belt, man. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, instead of a mora, I use uh, my James Wood knife as ooh going upscale <laughs> to use because it was like a flat handle, so I thought that would be easier but I don't know if it is because it has to go in a certain way yeah obviously and it was also pretty long but I had fun uh laying it out and carving it out and everything like that and then Rachel insisted that I give it the full Patrice paint job so um I was like how do I paint a black bat to still show all of yeah. the carving that I did so um the fruit bat that I modeled this after is like black and brown. And so I use the brown highlights to, to highlight the yep. bat outline. And sure then is. I did not cut slits into the sides because it fits like pretty nicely in there. And it's like an upside down bat hanging. <laughs> so I don't know like if I'd ever hang it I'd like to hang it upside down because that would be pretty fitting for a bat um, sheath. And then. And you trust I, that it wouldn't fall out at all? Like it fits nice and snug? Yep, it does. It has nice little hand, finger grips. I was going to say, that's kind of nice, the little finger grips there. Not, not only does it look like the ends of the bat's wings where they're kind of scalloped edges like that, but it's perfect for the finger grip to make it easier to yep. pull the knife out. Yep. So. Um, it's just basswood that I got from John. Thank you, John. And then I painted it with acrylic paint. And um, yeah, worked brilliant. Out really well. Really, really brilliant design. So you and so well done. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. awesome. Thanks. All right. Jump back out to the gallery. Wave a hand. Who would like to go next? All right, John. Hey, everybody. Yeah, I don't know why I want to follow Patrice, but. <laughs> Someone's got to well, do it. <laughs> yeah, might as well get it done. Uh, mine's quite a bit simpler. Um, it looks great. Spent a lot of time laying the, the chips out, the, the pattern out. <laughs> I think anybody that's trying to get into chip carving, the it's not really the carving that's the hard part. It's yeah, it's laying out your design. Like Jurgens is amazing, and so uh, I got a torch and um, lightly charred the thing, and I think that really brings out the nice uh, kind of you know the, the uh, carving and the lines and the yeah. Um, uh, it's totally. pretty good. I I I did not do the split of the slits because it, it just it, I've never had a problem with it fitting. So um, I never got it to pop, but yeah, but it fits. It. I spent a lot of time, way more time, uh, getting it to fit in. You know, with it split apart, getting it to fit in there. I spent yeah. a lot of time trying to get it really accurate. So. So it's 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 nice and nice and tight. So um, please refrain a uh, spoiled banana, which it kind of looks like. But <laughs> I hadn't thought of that. But now that you say it, it actually does kind of look like that. Looks like I can make a <laughs> banana bread out of this pretty easily. It'd be pretty good. 
Should have put. You should have chip carved fruit flies on it. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Maybe I'll put them on the on the knife itself. This was my original original spoon carving knife, so I, I thought it it deserved a nice sheath. So there I go. All done. You're an old banana with a greasy black peel. <laughs> Great job. <laughs> so funny. All right. Let me drop back out. Great job on the chip carving. All right. Who would like to go next? All right, Kate. Okay. Good morning. It's sun just came is coming up, so it's morning. Okay, so anyway, uh I did the first uh, time I saw Anya's challenge, I was so excited because I, you know, would not, I didn't know anything how to do it, but I wanted to, so I just tried. So I made this little sweater um, sleeve and I was inspired by Marianne's knitting, <laughs> carving. So I tried to do it. <laughs> It was kind of Whoa. a big project, but that's, um, I ended up carving only one little split or um, uh, just right here because it fits pretty tight. So I didn't really need it, uh, anything else. So that worked out pretty well. And then when rise up and carve posted the challenge i was like well i better make another one i can't just sail through on this one so <laughs> i then made this um i nice. decided to stick with the cozy theme so making like a little quilt for my knife nice and uh i kind of did this sawtooth quilt pattern and then i don't know it's kind of a horrible lighting but that's um, right. yeah, it's very pretty. Yeah, so Real I chip nice. carved it. I did chip carve it and then painted it. So um, it's kind of like, you know, there it is. And the, I this is for my shorter knife. Twenty, yeah. And I didn't it. I tried to. It fits really tight, so I didn't need to drill any. Uh, holes or it's, anything yeah. but yeah so yeah anyway it was really really fun and I was glad to learn a new technique and I really thank you for that Anya and um anyway awesome yeah. great job Kate thank you all right, jump back out to the gallery and who would like to go next? Wave a hand, folks. All right, Mauro and then Dave and then George. Okay, hi. With a fast look to the past, I love to make uh, uh, wood and wood and leather handle. Then I have some some hand, uh, some sheet like uh, this one from the past. Nice. Inspired from uh, this type of uh, sheet, I've done something similar, but uh, all uh, by wood. Yeah. It's a simple one. I try to make it uh, uh, smaller as possible. It's uh, quite thin on uh, the larger part of the handle. Uh -huh. and, uh, the, the slack. Nice. Not much, but it's uh, stable. Yeah. With uh, the drying hole, the hole on the, the bottom and so on. And I have a plugin to make uh, uh, a leather loop. To use. Nice. Then I have a, a bigger version. This one still for Mora, but for both the. Um, oh, the nice. Side. Yeah, there's some really cool boxes that people do out there. I loved like Anya's sort of sheath slash box with the, the hinge lid on it, the carrot that opens up. That's pretty cool. Really, really nice. Anyway, thank you to Anya. So. 
Yeah, excellent job. Yeah, I love that shape. Is that that's sort of a what's that shape from? Is that a Sammy sort of? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think it's the one is parred to the uh, the original one. I think it, it was done with um, the, um, the the deer uh, and uh, antler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. For this part and leather for uh, this one, and that makes sense. Comfortable uh, uh, sheet because it's a smaller respect the one made only with uh, with wood. Yep, really cool. Very, very nice. Great job. Yeah, Anya's showing hers too. Yeah. Oh yeah, here, hold on. Let me go spotlight you again real quick, Anya. Yep, very nice. The, the, I haven't made this, but uh, since you were talking about Sami, this is the Sami. Yep. One, so it's made of reindeer antler and here and leather here, but it's this hard leather. And the, the shape that is rounded is because it's supposed to swing away when you bend down so you don't get poked by having this in your leg so it it always swings away when you when you bend because it hangs on the same uh -huh. so that's okay. why it's uh, shaped like that yeah that's so when you wear it the point faces when you wear it on your belt the point faces forward or backward so it faces backward. Got it. Backward, okay. you, yeah, so yeah. that when you bend down, it'll, yeah, that makes sense. It will, yeah. Yep. Curl around your thigh. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and this stuff's not really because it could collect all that. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're unlucky. But anyway. Not that's, only that's is it like horrible it. material, it's just poorly designed. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So I'll unmute myself. Let me. All right, let me go back out. And Dave, where'd you go? Where'd Dave, hold on, Dave is next. And then I think if George is on, I think George wanted to go, um, unless he was just waving hi. Dave, where'd you go? Wave real quick. There you are, thank you. I couldn't find you in the, in the grid. <laughs> I'm here. My eyes, I need new glasses. Okay, take it away. Okay. So here's, here's my guy. That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. So kind of after my gnomes that I do. And it's, yeah. It's carved out of a birch branch. And uh, I, again, I didn't get the pop neither, but it fits snug. In fact, when I first made it, I jammed the knife in there and it went in and it wasn't coming out. I had to put her in the vise and pull an Anya on here and uh, <laughs> get it out. So, uh, yeah, no, it, it was a fun project. I uh, thank Anya for doing the presentation. It was learned a lot from doing it. And, uh, and then I just got a tip from Dominic here to uh, paint the handle red. So yeah, that's a no brainer. I got Oh yeah, yeah, that. yeah. So, Brilliant. So, uh, it that way. That is so cool. I love it. I love gnomes, man. That's awesome. So yeah, so that's my guy. So, and it, it works, it works good now, so. Gnomes and wood spirit faces are what inspired me originally to even take up carving at all. Yeah. So that's so yeah. cool. That is fun to do. Great job. All right. Dive back out. And George, let me yes, uh, spotlight you real quick. Yeah. Sorry that I'm, it's it maybe a little bit difficult because I'm in the car. So, um, yeah, that was my first attempt. Uh, it's for Mora 120. Um, I didn't manage to make the click as well. So that's why I made this wrapping around the sheet. Yeah. Um, and I did some silver wire wrapping on the bottom. So it, it holds nice and tight, but no click. So that was my first thing. And I think the only trick to make it really click is to just work as accurate as possible. So um, the second one is this one. So here I made a silver wrapping up here, but uh, it was not needed to make the click, but it's just a moment. So it's difficult to, uh, so it's, yeah. There we yeah. have the click. Only have nice. one hand, sorry. So yeah, 
I had a nice Damascus blade for that. So I wanted to make a um, wooden sheath for that for a long time. So I picked up the challenge to do that finally. And yeah, really nice. that's what I got. Awesome. Great job, George. One and two. <laughs> Very nice. What color is that? Is that is that painted or charred? No, it's a black walnut from Sunny. Thank you, Sunny, for that. So he oh, okay. some dry walnut and that was perfect to to evenize and um, so yeah. okay, so it's ebonized. All right, very good. Yeah, it's Excellent. evenized um, walnut. Yep. That's a really cool color. I like it. Yeah. And you can even uh, pull this up and wear it uh, around your neck if you want to. So it's that's why are uh, these strings a little bit longer. Yeah. So Awesome. What I got. Great job. Yeah. Thanks, George. It was a challenge again, <laughs> like always. Indeed. All right. Who would like to go next? All right, Matt. Let me uh, spotlight you. Hello. 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 Thank you for the challenge. So I'm into Japanese woodworking and I made this sheets for my uh oh, your chisels nice for all my chisels a long time ago so i knew about this technique and it's really good then i made a, a sheet for my kiridashi knife it was also without the handle so, so the handle is also mine and then <laughs> more in the carving world so this is my first first one that i did of this uh Oh, there is a click even. <laughs> it was not intended. Okay, and then to the challenge. So I have this knife. This is the uh, Higonokami, Japanese folding pocket knife. Uh, it's okay for carrying in your pocket, but you cannot carve with it because it's like the handle is uh, metal. It's not, uh, it, it doesn't fit your hand securely and the, the the knife is like you cannot fix the blade. Yeah, and it's not even for carving. So I thought, how can I remedy that? And I made this sheet. I made it this night. I get, yeah, this this night. So, <laughs> uh, and you can fit the the blade inside. And now I have a carving knife. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then. If I don't, ah, my hands are slippery. Ah, yeah, here it is. And if I don't, if I want to put it in my pocket, then. Ah, oh, brilliant. Yeah, so it's it's handle sheet in, 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 in That's one. That's so cool. Yeah. I wanted to do this for, for a couple of months. I had in my, in my head, but the, the challenge finally made me to do it so i'm pretty happy with that <laughs> awesome that's a really great idea yeah and here i, I had some uh, uh some uh oh, yeah i had a, a hole here because i i planed the 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 handle too thin too thin so i just wrap it with some veneer and it's okay so, nice it's really, yeah, I'm happy with it. Thank you. Very, very cool. Great idea. Thank you. All right. Drop back out. Who would like to go next? Wave a hand. Anybody? Is everybody gone? That wants to go? Kalen, there you are. Um, so I really enjoyed this challenge. I thought it was a lot of fun and um, super, super creative. So thank you so much, Anya, for, for doing it. I was hoping to do a couple of sheaths, but ran out of time. <laughs> and it took me a little longer to do than I originally thought. And the wood stock that I had was um, cedar. And so I just used kind of the standard shape 
And I don't actually own a Moronite, so I used it to make it for my Adam Ashworth, which has a handle that I made myself. So it's got a pretty nice snug fit. Um, doesn't have exactly the click, but I haven't drilled the holes in it yet, so that may help out. And then for the I don't know if I don't, know if you'll get, I don't know if you'll get that click like without any handle where it doesn't get thinner at the top like yeah. you know what I mean I don't know that's if you true. would get that same effect that's true um but it does it stays in there oh, which, stuck, is the, yeah. which yeah. is the, the oh, ideal um and then I originally was going to chip carve the entire thing but the cedar splinters really a lot in mm -hmm. chip carving so I wasn't quite used to the technique so I just did one side. Um, it looks great. And it's, um, we get berries out here that are called salmon berries. And so it's the flower leaves and then a couple of the berries. Cool. The salmon berry plant. And then even though I didn't chip carve the entire sheath, I added little lines with each of the color profiles from the front onto nice. the back. So I think, it looks pretty nice. Um, again, I would have loved to have had it all the way done, but I'm excited to have just learned this technique and have the chance to make some more in the future. It really, looks fantastic. Really, Real great job. Yeah, thank oh, yeah. you. The salmon berries are blooming right now too. So. Yeah, yeah they're our timing. first berry. Yep, yeah, yep. They're, they're the first thing of spring that comes out. Kate, I love are that you picked that out. Thank you. Are they edible? Yeah, they're edible. And, they're, um, they have quite a bit of water in them, so people don't tend to make them as much into jams and jellies, but I make them into um, like drinking shrubs with a vinegar. Yep. And so you can put them in cocktails or, or um, non-alcoholic little mocktails a lot. So I do uh, drinking what? shrubs with salmon berries pretty often. How would you Separate. describe the flavor if you, if you just eat one? Oh, how would you describe the flavor, Kate? <laughs> They're um, not as sweet as you would think, but tart. Yeah. Um, a little acidic, tart. Like refreshing, I think. Re yeah, okay. refreshing. And you want to get them really plump and ripe because otherwise they're they're not very good. Yeah, then but they're a little one. bit of one of the berries that you take and you'll do like a little zing face when you eat them. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. still very good. Yeah. And they're, they're very fun because they come in the color of like salmon rose. So it's like a honey gold, but oh, then a cool. deep red. So it's a, it's a very cool, very cool local Pacific Northwest all the way up to Alaska berry. Nice. Yeah. Well, Great you, job. Simon. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Jump back out. Does any else who's not like Rachel or Suzanne or does anybody else any of you guys that are muted and not on camera to, oh Oren oh you you didn't finish yours I, I That's can right. give my excuse on one why mine is not done <laughs> go ahead okay um uh, uh first of all um thank you very much Anya for for taking part and in, uh, indulging us in this and giving us all your all your wisdom and all your know-how. Uh, we really appreciate it. So cool. Judy's with me, say hi. Um, I've, I've made a few different uh, sheets like this in the past so I can I can show these, but they don't they don't have the whimsical beauty of the of Anya's and I really wanted to do one. That's why I was pushing for it. So this is more of a traditional one and my father made for me a really gorgeous knot pattern here mm. for hanging it, hanging it on the belt. Uh, I've made in the past also these very simple ones for for my moras. The light keeps going in and out. Yeah. Here. Sorry about that. Um, of course, I did start one with the snail, and then <laughs> I just enjoyed it so much and made it so thin that I kind of you can see the light coming in from right here. So that one um, went to the to the bin. And uh, I've, I've, I've had just a really busy couple of weeks yesterday. I uh, took part in a really big woodworking festival and I just didn't have enough time to finish it. So I'll give you a sneak peek of the one I'm working on, a wood spirit uh, one, as you can see. 
it's nice. just it's not there yet so i'll give it a little bit more time and then uh i'll show it off when i'm when i'm finished so chuck that one's for you for you just said that you like wood spirits i so. love wood spirits man that's awesome cool i can't so, wait to so see it on its way i just did, don't want to rush it it'll be done when it's done yeah hopefully soon cool so thank you again all right yeah. Thanks, Orin, and thank you, Orin, for uh, you know sharing with us the idea to do this and reaching out to Anya to set set this one in motion. So, very cool. This was, in case anybody didn't know that, it, it, this was all Orin's idea. Um, so, Anya, you should feel very privileged. We 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 you jumped the queue of our Ruax spoon challenges. <laughs> all right, who, if anybody, is left to show anything off? All you folks that are muted out there and not on camera, I'm going to assume that you don't have anything. All right. With that, then, I will share my screen and we can uh, go through and take a look at some of the ones that have been posted. Uh, look at the um, pictures. So let me go ahead and share my screen real quick. Uh, oh, you know what? Before we do this, um, I also, if you haven't seen it, uh, the next challenge is posted. It is a cooking spoon form uh, by Michael Alexander, Wooden Spoon Fool on Instagram. And uh, so the template is posted. It's up there on Rise Up and Carve on our challenge page. Go up and grab it. Um, this one is going to be a little bit different, potentially. Um, Michael's forms are very well-rounded and smooth, and he always has the most gorgeous freaking wood grain woods to use so if you don't have access to gorgeous wood you're going to have to try to come up with some other uh ideas for how to decorate a very smooth rounded form um because that's sort of the the key for for this next challenge so go up and check it out one of the uh, things we're planning on doing can you hear me check uh yes now i can yeah is having a um thank you because because Michael always uses power tools, he thought it would be interesting to um, have a little demo where he maybe um, showed a bit of how he uses his power tools. And then he he, he watched me trying to axe one out uh, and then try to replicate what he does, um, but with knives. Um, so that's gonna be sometime next Saturday. That's gonna be when? Sometime next Saturday. Next Saturday, when when you have a specific time, are you going to do a post to announce it? Yeah, probably, probably yes. Okay. But also, it'll just go up on YouTube. So, well, eventually it will. Um, okay. It'll go up on YouTube. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm just because it, it's always good if you can join in live because then, of course, you get the opportunity to ask, ask yeah. questions and all of that. So. All right. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. I unfortunately the the show and tell date for that one is April twenty third, I believe. It's the it's whatever that Saturday is. Um, and I'm going to be away at the Green Wood Rights Fest down in North Carolina. So Kaylin has very kindly and graciously offered to step in to act as host for that show and tell. Thank you so much, Kaylin. Really appreciate yeah. it. And the one thing I was going to add to that, Chuck, is um, for people, if you can't find anything that's like fantastically beautiful wood grain in Greenwood, um, Michael in Seattle does carve dry wood often. So that's why he uses a bandsaw. He uses a series of gouges, but a lot of mm. rasps um, and files. So if you want to try your hand at carving like a piece of crazy figured wood that you have dry in the back of whatever your wood storage bin from ages ago, this might be a fun one to expand the Sloyd experience, I guess you may say. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a whole different approach to spoon carving that's, that's you know, it's been out there for a long time. There's, there was a really well, I actually first got interested in spoons a while back. There was a car, a guy, not really a car, I don't know if you call it a carver or how, how you would refer to it, but a spoon maker uh, from here in New York named Barry Gordon, who had articles about his work and he's had his, I mean, his work is gorgeous. Um, his you know, spoons will sell for hundreds of dollars. Um, you know, they're almost like, you know, museum, you know, quality pieces. I mean, they're, they're usable spoon shapes, but they're just absolutely gorgeous. And again, it's a lot of power tool. Um, you know, a lot of them are sanded. Um, and, you know, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's just a different approach. Um, so, awesome. 
All right, with that, I will share my screen. Uh, that one. There we go. Let me know if you can see my screen. Yeah, we can see it. Awesome. Okay, so I figured first what we would do, Anya, by the way, had to leave. She posted in the chat thanking everybody. Uh, she had a lot of fun seeing it. So um, thank you again, Anya, uh, for all of your tips, tricks, and hints. All right, so we'll start. I'll go through the, the Ruax Spoon Challenge hashtag, and then we can also go over and look at the Knife Sheath Challenge hashtag as well. Um, so let's start down here. Does anybody read French? A little bit. This is from someone, J.D. Pellets. Something, here's my something finished with the carving of stars and milk paint for my Mora 106. Nice. All right. Where's yeah, this the, is a good one. Where, where's the knife sheath? Am I missing something? That is the knife sheath. This, the spoon this is the knife moment. Sheath. Press play. Oh, it's a video. God. <laughs> oh, man. I'm such an idiot. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. <laughs> Brilliant. That's awesome. <laughs> very, very nice. Great idea. Well, Got me. I'm like, okay, it's a spoon. What's that got to do with a sheet? <laughs> All right. Yeah, there's a lot of these like blade only type sheaths that I've seen where it doesn't actually go all the way up around the handle. It's, it's, um, Sort of like the, I, I'll show it after we, we finish the thing, but I've got my, it's like my Roy knife. It's got a blade guard, I guess you would call it, um, that fits snugly just on the blade. This was just our announcement of the recording. Nice, Larry's tree frog. Oh, that's so cool. Right? I love frogs on anything. Yeah, so cool. That's awesome. Nice. Had nice, a nice belt hanging one. Oh, I guess that's the only photo. Very nice. JC, gorgeous chip carving on that one. I like what you did. And I like the kind of the alternating of the bands of color and chip carving with just the regular grain of the wood. Really, really nice. Great job. By the way, you can feel free to unmute yourselves. If you have anything you want to comment on or say, uh, you know, feel free at this point. God, that's so wild. It almost that almost looks like like a gem. You know what I mean? Like the 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 walnut. I'm assuming it's walnut. Is that what it is? Rainbow poplar. No, it's poplar. Yeah, interesting poplar. I've never seen it. Right? Like yeah, he said it looked like, yeah, that's what it looked like to me too, like a rock with striations of color. I actually buy it at Lowe's, and fun fact, you get it on clearance. 
<laughs> when it's uh, an uh, when it's a ugly color for retail, they'll give it to you for fifty percent off. Oh, nice! Wow, it's good to know. A little a little commercial for Lowe's there snuck in. Good job. <laughs> all about getting that bonus. Surprised you have time me. in between all your marketing for the Greenwood Fest. It's all about getting that bonus, Oren. You know, you got to remember that every time I plug it. <laughs> <laughs> really cool. From Bog Oak. Interesting. Bog oak and leather. So is, is there leather on the inside? Do you line it with leather? Is that what holds it on? So if you've never talked to Leo about this um, bog oak, it's like he says in the in the post there, it's 3,000 years old. He like saved it from somewhere. Uh, he got it like given to him and it's like 3,000 year old wood that he's carving. Yeah, I know there's a, there's a carver up in Scotland, uh, Jeff King, who makes like, he's really well known, Woodland Treasures, I think is his sort of company name, but he makes all these beautiful, amazing carved pendants. It's jewelry, it's all carved jewelry. And he gets, I think it's like from Ireland, they get, or, or maybe even they're in Scotland, maybe both. Uh, they get this bog oak stuff that's thousands of years old and it's incredible. It's really, really neat. Anyway, the leather is uh, inside the, the, the sheet and it's a ring just uh, to, the, to the top. You can see the leather on uh, this uh, uh, photo. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. I wasn't sure because I couldn't tell if that was just the wood or if that, oh, it's this little ring right there. Got it, okay. Yeah. So that's what helps it to grip onto the very bottom of the, the handle. Got it, okay, cool. Really, really neat. Looks like the handle's out of the bog oak also. Really cool. Well, another shot of Tad's, very nice. Another one of JC's. I love how that gunstock oil looks. So shiny. Yeah, well, do you know what? When you say gunstock oil, like what is it actually what is the actual oil? It's basically it's linseed oil, but there's obviously something in it. It's a hand rubbed finish. I've got it for mm. shotguns and things for refurbishing shotguns. Yeah. Uh, it smells just like linseed oil, but it dries in probably 25, 30 minutes. And you just put it little bit of the tips of your fingers and just keep on rubbing. It's, yeah. like, a hand, it's like a hand rub finish used to get in old English shotguns. Yeah, yeah. So maybe it's got a bit of a wax in it, like a... Like a mm, no, like I, a think I think it's just oils. Yeah, interesting. It's quite dark uh, brown, but yeah, it dries. I and mean, that's just a couple of coats. If I put three or four more onto it, it would end up really high gloss. Wow. Very cool. Sunny. Boy, Adam Ashworth's knives seem to be everywhere. Nice. I can blame Sunny for uh, encouraging me to buy mine, so. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Ian, I haven't seen Ian in ages. If anybody sees Ian, John, be sure to say hi to him. I feel horrible because I'm because I'm not around. I just I haven't seen him in forever. Well, speak to him was it last week. I think he's we've got on a spoon club in next Sunday, so we'll speak to him then again. Yeah, if you remember, just say hi. Tell him tell him I was asking about him. He's the same. That's one of the club knives because he's run out of his own knives. So he started to make sheaths for the club knives. Oh, nice. Really cool. I love his chip carving. I mean, you don't want to stay up till 1 a.m. to see him every night. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
I man, I'll tell you, I feel so out of it. I just I haven't been I haven't touched like my tools in ages. I'm hoping that going to Greenwood Rights Fest is going to kind of re re spark me and get me going again. I've, I've been just in this weird funk mm. between not having time and all that, just burnt out. I guess I don't know. Very rarely, no, very rarely. Nice. That looks fantastic, Kate. Thank you. Yeah, so pretty. How long did it take to paint over those different shapes and not blur them together? This it took a while, but so much work. Yeah. That's uh, super tedious. Yeah. I have a tiny paintbrush. Looks really good. Kate, the, the colors are reminding me to the well, the chip carving and, and the patterns to the 20s. Mm. Yeah. Beautiful. Really, really great job. Thank you. <laughs> I, love I love this one. <laughs> that was a brilliant idea to paint the top of the handle red to match it. <laughs> really, really cool. Dave was not going to do one, and Kaylin and I said, "Well, why don't you, why don't you make a gnome one?" And then, like, uh, you could just see the light flash. She's like, "Oh, maybe <laughs> I should do one." Yeah, no, oh, I was brilliant. Here we go. It's amazing. Absolutely brilliant. Thanks, Kaylin. It makes me Thanks smile God. every time. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm we so glad that you did it. It's so fun. <laughs> his little nose. Look at his little nose. So Maybe good. Needed to exist. <laughs> so good. Love it. And that was just our reminder. So I think that was was that everything. Oh no, there's some more spark spoons. Right. So Aaron, nice. Nice. He's got the snap. Love that. Why didn't he come on? This is so amazing. That's incredible. Yeah. I know. It's so good. Did you see the knife has like little teeth? Right. Uh, yeah. love, this, love this one. So good. So good. It's so amazing. <laughs> and a <the> grin. <laughs> yeah. Cool shot. Love how the mouth, the, the grin is where the hole is. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Oh, okay. It's like a, a knife holder, knife stand. And then that one. Cool. What kind of wood do you think that is? I don't know. It's cherry, cherry. Laurel. Camphor laurel, I would say. It's in the hashtag. Oh, is it? Yeah, camphor laurel. Oh, oh wow. That's gorgeous. I've never even heard of that wood. Very nice, Jody. I told, I said, I want this as a wallpaper now her pattern <laughs> isn't that cool yeah, yeah i want I, want, I feel like it's really uh hard to make something chaotic look beautiful like it's not chaotic because yeah. it somehow right. comes together but it it looks it's just so good i think that's like a talent that someone has yeah i would agree everyone can do that Really nice. Did she say she chip carved that first or? 
That, I was wondering the same thing, actually. Uh, I was wondering if like she carved through the painting. She carved over she, the paint. Yeah, she, she carved, carved over the paint. Yeah. Okay. But then I think I think some of it had to have gone back I think she did filled. both. Yeah, I was gonna say because here she has to have gone back and filled in color then. It looks like a really small paintbrush again. <clears throat> Amazing. Really neat. Oh, look looks that, good. John. I like the burn does. It doesn't look that much like a banana. It looks good. No, it doesn't. <laughs> That's not a banana at all, John. Come on. Yeah, it looks yeah. great. It looks fantastic. It looks like one step away from banana bread. <laughs> <laughs> no way. No. John, John if, if, if you don't want it. That's right. <laughs> no, I we'll love the, I love the torching in there. I'm really, I'm really happy with the torching. Yeah, it looks great. Really great job. Classy. I'm kind of surprised that there was no banana sheath. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This thing is just. Maybe it was too thing. obvious. Oh, Patrice, this turned out so well. It's right? gorgeous. Yeah. How did you, you saw me work on it? Oh my God, <laughs> yeah. this is so you. I How did you get that? I, I said the same thing. I'm just like, so you. <laughs> <laughs> it was based off of a, a bat on a t-shirt that I had. So, you know, I already liked the look. And I was like, ha, huh, what am I going to do for a knife sheath? A bat. And I just, that's what I decided on. And then I had to push through. <laughs> But it's so worth it though. It looks amazing. It's got a really nice flow to like his little wing, a little dance move type of a thing. It's really beautiful. It's mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah, with its little stuff. Just make sure you get your rabies vaccination before you use it. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Those ears are so good. <laughs> It's cute. I just wish there was a way to like hang it upside down because that would be really cool for a bat um, mm -hmm. themed anything. But you know, maybe something that held the knife in, some kind of wiring that would make it. Yeah, come that's out. why I was just sitting here and thinking too. Because then I could uh, mount it on the wall and it would just look really cool. You know what you could do? You could have almost like uh, like a, a spring clip that uh, is just like a wire that is a length of wire that turns up and fits across the bottom of the handle. And are you, is are you worried about the handle fall of the knife falling out or over time? You know, if it's yeah, like, it would loosen up always in there upside down, then it might loosen up. So something that would keep it from falling out and then I could use like magnets yeah. to attach it to the wall would be really cool. Totally. Really? Yeah. I, I'm thinking yeah. like at the end of like my um I don't have it handy, but the at the end of my uh saw, right? My folding saw, there's that there's a clip that rat comes up around. It's like it, it pokes in on the two sides of the handle and you can fold it up or fold it down and it'll come across the end of the blade. Um, you could either use it as that or as like a belt clip uh, type of a thing. Um, yeah, send but, me a picture so I have a better idea. Yeah, you know what? That'd be great. That was smooth and I know where it is. Since you coughed, like I said, quite a long time, obviously. Ah, uh, come on. Ah. Uh. Oops, where's the camera? So that just fits through a hole in the end of the handle. Are you able to? Oh, I just realized because I'm sharing the screen. Yeah, we can see it. Do that. 
So it's just like a, a, a wire clip that, you know, and you could do something similar just with like some either, I don't know what kind of wire you'd want to use, copper or something like that. And you could just embed the ends into the, the, the sheath. Like go so over that, the whole top. Yeah, I would do it probably the other orientation so that you're going across the width of the handle, yeah. Okay. It's just, that's just one idea. I'm sure there are other, maybe probably more elegant ways of doing it as well. But that was just the one that popped to my head first. And if you have ideas, send them to me. Um, you could DM me or something. We don't need to hold up yeah. the the video, but yeah, that would be really cool. I just skills I don't have yet. So yep. Very cool. Chuck, you broke your time without your tools. Now pick up I know and, and do some spoons. I have yeah. I have a, a hard hard as rock. Oh, uh, olive wood one here that I'm, I haven't barely touched. This is from a piece of wood that I got last October at Spoon Camp, New Jersey. All righty, where was I? Um, oh, okay, yeah, cool. Great, great, great idea. Share your screen. Chuck, share your screen. Oh, I'm not sharing the screen again, duh, forgot. See, God. I'm such a loser. Somebody else needs to take over this job. Here we go. No, you're doing fine, Chuck. You're doing great, Chuck. Thanks. All right, there we go. We're on to yours, Matt. Very cool. So on the first photo, there are the tools that I used for making it. So all, all of that. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nice. Such a great idea. Thank you. That really was a brilliant idea. I've never even heard of this kind of knife. Uh, I'm into Japanese things, all things Japanese, and all things Japanese would work in. So yeah. Uh, but this oh. one I just get got as a, a gift when I ordered some big order of chisels from one of the stores in Poland. So, so is this uh, like? Just like a like a Japanese utility knife, basically. Yeah, yeah. The, it's it's a pocket knife. So if you want a simple pocket knife uh, in Japan, you will get one of this this there. Yeah. But they can be uh, very fancy with great steel, great handles. So you can. This is the the the, the cheap model, but gotcha. you can go like into Ferrari levels with these ones. <laughs> Like with all Japanese stuff, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is gorgeous wood, Brad. And, and a bit of April snow for everyone's pleasure. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Very nice. It's 100 degrees in the shade here today. I'm sitting in shorts oh, in front no. of a fan. It's not fair, Brad. That's too warm. Is it seriously 100 degrees in the shade there? 100 degrees in the shade. Yeah, it's way too hot. Wow. I wow. wish it would, you know, ease in. And then, you know, your body kind of uh, gets ready for it. But no, it was raining last week with hail. And then suddenly 100 degrees. Wow. wow. 24 here. It's too shiny. And, and um, the Australians, they, they had such a big, big flooding in some parts yeah. of it. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, that was everything on our RUAC Spoon Challenge hashtag. Um, so now let's go take a look at Anya's knife sheath hashtag. So this is her little animation. <laughs> These are so good. Nice.
<laughs> Love it. <laughs> That's phenomenal. How do you do these animations, by the way? Are, I mean, are you literally taking stills and then you use there some pieces? Stop, there are stop motion apps that you can download. One's literally called Stop Motion and it's free and it makes it really easy for you. Oh, cool. I, I got to try that. You can also like just video and pause your camera phone, but yeah. it's probably not as smooth. Yeah. Yeah, the, the apps really make it really easy because usually they have um, the second, you can see your previous frame in low opacity and you can line things up um, cool. and then you can choose the frame rate before you export. They really make it easy. Cool. So do you do them, do you do them with a, the camera on a tripod of some sort or do you? Uh, it de depends. I've got all kinds. Some of them are tripod and some of them I like to move it around. It makes it look like it's a video that you you know, kind of live that you moved around. Gotcha. Depends what yeah. I'm aiming for. But try, this is with the tripod. It makes it yeah. very comfortable. And, I, and then it looks like she zoomed in by moving the phone closer. Gotcha. Thanks, really cool. All right. Dan working on one. I love this one, the knife in a knife. Brilliant. Everybody's doing it now. That's what all the cool kids are doing. I know, I'm always late to the party. I was late getting on Instagram. Well, that's not true. I wasn't always late. I was the first one to start the whole Zoom thing. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Victory. Victory is mine. Nice. Oh, was that it? That can't be all. I must have clicked in the wrong place. Another Dan with the bird. I love the bird. Love it. Oh, even Paul did one. What's that? Even Paul Addison did one. Right? Yeah. Didn't don't see the final yet. Yeah. Nice key. So Thank good. you. I didn't put it on the uh, spoon challenge hashtag because it was before that, so I didn't think it was fair. That's all right. <laughs> Why not fair? What does it matter? I don't know. I didn't want it to be the first post oh. on that hashtag. So. I love this one. I think this is my favorite one. Uh, mm -hmm. I aside, agree. From, aside from the bat, the bat is pretty freaking amazing. <laughs> yeah, this one's so good. The leaves. Right? So good. I love that one. That one reminds me of Jody's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like the fancy finial stuff down at the bottom too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and her last one, this one. Yeah, I think that one she was saying it's um, from a uh, inspiration from a local church in her area. Oh, that's cool. Like a spire. Yeah. 
Love the fish too. The carrot. <laughs> hey, what's up, Doc? I like that one a lot too. I love how she does those color gradations like that. Mm -hmm. To me, that's just so freaking eye catching. Yeah. Like her tool handle, she does that on a lot of stuff. I remember seeing her work like seven, eight years ago where she was doing that, you know, with the color gradations on various tools. And like thinking gorgeous about spoon of hers with, with that color gradation with the heart carved in the middle. Oh, Another nice. Classic one. Oh, nice, Luke. Yeah. Luke getting in on the action. It's like wrapping paper. Like, yeah. It does look like a paper. It does. It looks, it looks <laughs> yeah. I was just looking to see it. Yeah, it's wood burned. So I love it. That's really cool. Very nice. There's oh, Paul. There's Paul's finished. Oh, nice. Classic. Mm -hmm. So can someone explain to me why the drill at the bottom of the slot works it, it, to prevent it, it splitting? It, um, because it's, it means you've not got a single stress point. It's in a circle. So okay. Instead of carrying on forming a crack, it's supposed to hit the circle and just stop. Okay. You do it yeah, in glass like, and all sorts of things. Diffuses the pressure. Yeah, that's the technical version. <laughs> <laughs> you and your fancy terminology, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you only knew how unfancy I am. <laughs> Love it. Really nice. Ooh. Like that. I like the, these kind of geometrical faceted ones. Mm -hmm. Got some good ideas, Chuck. You know what you're gonna do? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I get, I've got so many ideas. I've I've lost more. I I've forgotten more ideas than any I. You know, I see things like, oh, I got to do that. Oh, I got to do that. And that's my problem. I, I never do anything. I just sit and look at what other people do. Ugh. Don't be like me. Don't be a Chuck. Nice. What are those called in the wood? Edulary rays. And what are they? Like, why does that happen? It's the cell structure of the, it's in the cell structure of the wood. So it's like a different cell shape. Is, but is, is, is the purpose of it to allow moisture or something to transpire like across the the grain as opposed to like what's the what's the do we know a reason for why it's there kevin has about a 35 minute dissertation on it really <laughs> yeah he he has a he has the full breakdown of it i'll be honest i only heard about 15 minutes and then i tuned out but it, <laughs> it's a full it's a full thing it's fantastic wow did he record it no, no, but I'm sure he'll be happy to recite it for you. <laughs> That's so funny. It was funny because I was supposed to on 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 when I go to Green Woodwork Rights Fest, it's all it's like a nine hour drive for me. So I was thinking in my mind, well, I'll stop somewhere like halfway. And I thought, oh, Baltimore, that should be about halfway. I didn't realize it, but he's, it's still six hours from Baltimore to Pittsburgh, North Carolina. So I was like, Kevin, this isn't going to work because I'll get to you at like eight o'clock at night. 
you'll keep me up until two in the morning and then I've got to get up and leave at five. <laughs> this is a recipe for disaster. So I said, I, much as I, I wanted to stay with you, I think we're going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to pass on it for this time and, and keep going further Thursday night till I get closer down. Because I was like, I know what that, that's just, that's not going to work. <laughs> Once he and I get started, we'll, we'll just keep going until I collapse. Wow, this is so cool too. I know this one I love. I kind of wanted to copy it, but it's yeah. so this is the problem with seeing other people's work because then it's like I feel like every anything I do is going to be derivative of something somebody else has done at that point. <laughs> That's not nice. a problem. That's well, right. Yeah. It's called That's shapeless. Yeah. <laughs> really, really nice. Ooh, what knife did he put in there? I was going to say, it looks like a plastic handle on whatever it is. It's a pretty big knife. I was going to say, that's a, that's a huge sheath. Or a small hand. Well, that could be too. I doubt it. Wow. Very dramatic picture. I was going to say, who's, is that Luke's hand? Yeah, a coal miner? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, that's like uh, that's like a seriously like that's the a... sharpening on Instagram has been turned all the way up. Yeah. <laughs> Are we supposed to look at his hand or at the sheath? Right. Well, that's an example of what does your eye go to first? With mm -hmm. lotion and without. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hot dog. Uh, like this one. <laughs> yeah, so good. That's awesome. So, so funny. Good. So good. Right? That's brilliant. That is just <laughs> freaking brilliant. It's matched so, so well. Oh, so whimsical. How does she come up with these things? Right? So freaking whimsical. At the time, you wouldn't uh, think that was a sheath at all. No. Mushrooms in, uh, in Sweden. I'd be afraid to take it to a, like a woodcarver's gathering. Somebody's going to pick it up and start eat, trying to eat it, thinking it's a hot dog. <laughs> nice. Very cool. Ooh, love those blues. Yeah. Look at I'm those colors a, on the handle. Right? I'm such a sucker for that color of blue though. That is That's gorgeous. Is that it? Did we see Mary Ann's? She didn't put the, she didn't post it in, under any of the hashtags. She just oh, so, posted so it. So maybe you should go you into her Instagram. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll go, I'll go jump on it. Oh, she, no, here it is. No. Oh, oh she, okay. yeah, she no, did I that meant, one. I her new one. Oh, yeah, that's she, also amazing. The new one she didn't put under the hashtag. So you can go from there into her Instagram. Bog oak stuff again. An axe oh, sheet. Another cool challenge to do. Yeah, it's so uh -huh. cute. I love it. <laughs> oh, excuse me. All right. All right, let me go. What was it? Uh, Mary Ann's turtle leg. Oh, I never saw that lightning bolt one. 
I'll go back. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'll go back. I, I, I thought I had gotten through most of them, but apparently not. Wait, what's going on? Why is my search not working? There's also Magnus's right there. Is that this one? Yeah. That's Magnus. Wow. That's cool. Hmm. Why did I freeze? <laughs> yep. Hi, Dave. Yep. Glad you made it this early. Yeah. <laughs> Don't cool get to see it in person. <laughs> well, there's also uh, ties down there. Oh, is this the one you're talking about? This alligator? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's so cool. It's not an alligator. It's a um, crocodile. A gharial. Is that what it's called? The thin, the really thin mouth one. They live in India. Yeah. It's very cool. Gharial, yeah. That is really neat. It is. I love it. Mm-hmm. Wow. Marianne's stuff is so good. Yeah. Gorgeous. All right, go back to the hashtag, sorry. Where were we? Let me go back up to the top. Let's see, where did we get to? Oh, we were just about at uh, Magnus's. Did we get past all of this? No, because there's tight. No, we didn't see tight. So I think we were somewhere right around here. We I'll go here. That's ties. Very nice. Very, very nice. Oh, we auctioned that one as part of the Ukraine thing, right? Brilliant. <clears throat> Ian's, we saw that below, right? Yep. Kate, brilliant. Love that. Am I going the right way? I think I am, right? The leather. What the heck kind of a, a raw neck knife? What's a raw neck knife? All right, that's that. We saw that, didn't we? Am I going the wrong direction? No, we just posted in multiple places. Okay, going the wrong way. You're going the right way. It was just because we're on a different hashtag now, it's, so it's. Like, yeah, here goes well, Magnus's. The tops versus the most recent, but I guess if it's in the most, the top, it doesn't also appear in the most recent. I don't understand the way Instagram sorts these things. All right, I'm going to here. Wow. I think it's amazing how you get to this point and then you have to decide. How are you going yeah. to paint? <laughs> and he did a great job choosing color. Yeah, totally. I feel like we get paralyzed at that point. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> That's true. You're, you always know what you want to do. <laughs> yeah, right. Gotta let the whiskey decide, right, John? Yeah. For the number of hours you have left. Yeah, the wing that's, is there. that's a good. Yeah, that's a good deciding factor. Wow, that's unbelievable. Oh, so incredible! So cool. You assume you painted the knife at the same time?
Do the earlier pictures have the knife? Yeah, the original color. It's amazing. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's commitment. Wow. That is really striking. Goes where? That is really striking. Yeah, no, okay. yeah, he knows what goes with what. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. I made this one in a hurry, he says. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, oh, look at those facets. Oh, that's perfect. That's crazy. That's incredible. Wowzer. That's amazing. I, I mean, I'd be happy with it just as a spoon, let alone a sheath. Ah, lightning bolt. Mm -hmm. That's fun. That's cool. Looks like, looks like he's done some really interesting texturing on the uh, handle, too. The knife handle. Actually, I say he. Is that a he or a she? Matthew. Matthew. Wow, cool. Lift of the woods. Hmm. I think that's it. That's beautiful. Cool. Gorgeous, gorgeous work out there. Amazing stuff. This was a really fun one. Yeah. All right. I'm going to stop sharing real quick. We'll come back into our screen. Uh, hey, Sean. You should really, you should you should really make one yourself. I know. I got to get it. Like, it's fun. A, a great Lord of the Rings one, maybe. Oh, Ooh. yeah. Yeah. Oh, stop it. I go, you stop it, Oren. <laughs> I think I want to talk. I didn't finish mine. You're a bad, bad man. <laughs> it's motivation. I'll, bad, I'll badger you the whole weekend at Greenwood Rite Fest. Don't worry, John. No, we'll, we'll, we'll get it done. Oh, he needs to have oh. one hanging on his belt by then. That's true. Oh. There's plenty of time, according to Amazi's countdown. All right, well, thank you, everybody. It was wonderful having you all here for this latest challenge. It's time to stop recording now. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, God bless everyone. We'll see you next time. Cheers.